Welcome to another episode of Fantastic Forum. I'm your host, Devon Sanders, and we're going to try and keep you entertained today. Uh, first up, let me introduce our guest over here. We got, this is a great name, Patrick Michael Strange. Over here to his right, we got Jeff Weaver, owner of Victory Comics, and we also have Billy Ray Bates. And today we're going to be talking about, is this the greatest generation ever for, like, geekdom? With, like, the Avengers out there just breaking all kinds of like sales records and people looking forward to like the third in the Batman franchise. We got to know. Anybody? I think it's a great time to be a comics fan. Um, right. They're approaching all these properties. Uh, Kick-Ass uh, did right. well. Um, and it, it, I actually even saw online today that uh, Stallone was a little bit annoyed with the success of all these comic book films are taken away kind of from the action genres that had been, you know, coming throughout the 80s, where it was mainly a lot of action films, but now it's action superhero films. And so uh, I'm loving it as a comic book fan, and uh, I, I can't wait for more films uh, coming through. I want Justice League. Now that we've got <laughs> Avengers out there, let's get Justice League oh, out there. Oh, we're definitely going to talk about All right. that. What do you think, Jeff? Well, I mean, 10 years ago, I went to uh, San Diego Comic-Con, right. and you could, almost any day except for Saturday, you could walk up the day of the show and buy a ticket and get in. Right. Now yeah. the show is sold out. The sh at the year before at the show. So if you're not at the show buying tickets for, for next year, you're not getting in. I mean, it is phenomenal, the sort of growth of, of sort of general interest in, in all these comics, comic-related movies, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. It's, it's, uh, it's in 10 years, it's exploded. No, it's, it's truly an incredible yeah. thing. It's like my nephew, who doesn't even like comics, I can't even believe we're like related, really. <laughs> um, this kid's already seen The Avengers three times. What do you think, Billy? Well, I think, um, you know, I agree about the San Diego Comic Con. It's just amazing how mainstream it's mm -hmm. gone. You know, now you have um, Entertainment Tonight and all the biggies sending people there to cover the event where you didn't have that probably right, right. 10 years ago. And I think it's had a lot of ripple effects, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the success of the Big Bang Theory, too, yeah. which I love. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it is fun to be geeky now. It's, it's kind of in to be geeky now. And I love that because I've always embraced my own geekiness. Right. I mean, <laughs> I remember, like, growing up and reading comics and it was this very sort of like insular thing where like yeah. you would sit there and you would buy your comics and you couldn't take them to school you couldn't talk to you know you had, the, to, hide the pub them. You had to hide them you couldn't talk <laughs> to the <laughs> public <laughs> in <laughs> general <laughs> about them. you know if you said hey I've got this comic it was like could you be elsewhere you know <laughs> and now it's like this this year we got people really really looking forward to you know, seeing Avengers four or five times already. Mm -hmm. Batman is probably going to like even possibly break that record. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Big Bang Theory is the number one like comedy on television mm -hmm. right now. And it's about four comic book geeks and the girl who loves them. Yeah. So <laughs> where do you think this is all coming from? What, where? Well, there's always been great stories in comics. And you know, you talk about at the time when you were young and you had to sort of hide it and stuff. And the truth is, is that in those times, there were actually more people buying comic books than there are now. Right. But the comic book properties have exploded out of the books, mm. onto the big screen, onto the TV, and, and all these other genres. And that's, I think, where people are sort of picking it up. So we're trying to get those people now to, who've discovered, like, the Avengers at the movie theater, right. to suddenly realize that these, you know, they can read the Avengers every month in a book right. that comes out. Yeah, I mean, well, we're both in, like, you know, the comic book business, you know, we sell them. <laughs> And one of the things that like happens when like you actually have like a Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, and Avengers, uh, someone inevitably asks you, "Has the, have you seen any sort of crossover between the two? Mm -hmm. Have you actually seen any like you know new fans like kind of curious about what this thing was that they saw on TV?" Uh, I yeah, definitely have, and you know properties like Walking Dead. I mean that's brought mm -hmm. a lot of people oh, yeah. in, oh, yeah. you know, and that's a completely mm -hmm. different yeah. animal than yeah. say Avengers or Batman. You know, it appeals to a very different audience, but those people are now coming in to sort of uh, discover what's in the comics, which is somewhat different than the television program. Right. Yeah. So, so it is bringing a lot of new people in, absolutely. Okay. Uh, to to tag, I guess to tag along with that, uh, Young Justice. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. A lot of people uh, have been watching that, fans of that, and because I'm a comic book guy and friends uh, ask me about that, who's this uh, Aqualad character? Was there a black Aquaman? Like, who is this? <laughs> and so I was like, um, kind of new to the series, but they introduced him in Brightest Day 4. Um, right. And they, he's now kind of become a member uh, of uh, comic book lore. And so it's kind of cool, I have to say, personally, as a fan who's a fan of the comic books, and much like really diehard geeks, we get a little bit upset with when they kind of don't do the same thing that we right. see in comic books. But then they have introduced some great characters uh, like uh, Aqualad, right. uh, the, well, the new Aqualad, because there is a different Aqualad if you're a diehard comic book guy. Right. 
But um, what they did with this Aqualad is just phenomenal. It's really uh, stylistic and it, it's just really cool. So um, I think when that crosses over um, into, uh, with the people that are watching it as comic book fans and now they want to know into it, they come into the comic book stores and uh, I'm enjoying it. And mm. uh, yeah. Well, one of the things that like I've, I've also noticed working in the comic book shop is that we're getting women into the comic book uh -huh. shop. Oh, yeah, really? And yeah, it's <laughs> oh, it's yeah. this weird, well, it's not weird so much, <laughs> but it's <laughs> something I've never seen before. It's like, not so much women interested in Wonder Woman, like this mm -hmm. thing that they're supposed to be interested in. But yeah. they are. But they are, yeah. Yeah. but they are. <laughs> yeah. But they're wanting different things. I think, honestly, I think women really get the fact that comics isn't so much a genre, it's a medium. Yes. Yeah. Mm, so like, okay. so, right, so like, what do you like out there? I mean, what <laughs> what made you like a fan and you know, what keeps you as a fan, even though like, you know, quote unquote, you're not really in the boys club of comic book collecting? Yeah, well, you know, when I was a kid, um, a little girl growing up in the 70s, there mm -hmm. were three big, huge um, female superheroes to look up to as role models. Of course, there was a Linda Carter TV series that was on TV mm -hmm. at the time with Wonder Woman, so she was one. And then also Supergirl you saw in the comics a lot. Right. And then Batgirl, but mm -hmm. Batgirl was the redhead. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I like her, right. Batgirl. Right. And so my grandparents would buy me the Batman Family comics from oh, the yeah. 70s, right. which sure. featured Barbara Gordon mm -hmm. as Batgirl. And so that's where I think, that was my entry point. And then from there, I have always loved Batman. I think it's because of Batgirl. I love Batman, too. Mm. And so these days, I read the Batgirl title. I read some Batman, too. I read Batman and Robin okay. because I love Damien. I hate oh, him and I love him. Character. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I love to hate him, right. literally. And so I loved the interplay between Damien and his dad, mm. you know, because I knew at the start of that series I was going to sign on because his dad was going to put that kid in his place, and I had to see it. Right. You know, his I had dad to watch is, it. Is Batman. So yeah. yeah, and I've always loved Archie comics too, right. and I do, you know, like Wonder Woman. I'll read some Wonder Woman now and then, mm. and so yeah, it is a little bit of diversity in what I read now compared to just the Batgirl that I right. loved when I was a kid. Right. Yeah. Okay. So like, what do you think also? When like you actually see, go to a convention or whatever, and you see all these people there, and there's like tens of thousands of people at like a San Diego Comic Con, who do you think is actually at that like, convention? Do you think it's actually hardcore fans? Do you think it's just like looky loos who are like, hey, look at the geeks? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> well, it's awfully expensive for you to go to go and just be a looky loo. Yeah. Getting right. more and more expensive to go. The hotels in San Diego triple the, the oh, yeah. week of the show. So. Um, but I, th you know, it's a, San Diego is a weird mix because there's so much Hollywood at San Diego, yes. so there's a lot of people who are very, very sort of dedicated to the movie properties and to the television shows, and all of the studios have huge, you know, elaborate displays. So it's quite a showcase for all that. You know, my sort of business at conventions is sort of back issue business, so I deal right. with you know sort of the more gray-haired guys over on the right. little corner that San, San Diego keeps pushing into the corner. But um, it's a real mix of people there. Uh, mm -hmm. More so than I think in the past, you know, when it was more sort of guys who looked like me who were coming in and, you right. know, picking up books from the 60s or 50s or 40s or, or what have you. But there's a lot more women, a lot more young people, a lot more families. It, it's a much more diverse, you know, sort of uh, uh, racially diverse. It's just a much more diverse group of people at comic book shows than was the case even 10 years ago. All right. Yeah, one of the things that I'm kind of like seeing that is going on with like comic book fans, there's an ownership going on there. Mm -hmm. And in this ownership, we've kind of had to let go a little bit. You know, our favorite characters, like, you know, the Avengers. This thing that probably couldn't have been done in like the 80s or the 90s, because of the technology finally catching up to the ideas that Jack Kirby and Stan Lee actually had. Mm -hmm. You can see them on, you know, on screen. You know, it, it's not a thing to actually look and see, like a very human Thor fighting a CGI Hulk, and just go, "That's a movie." Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, so do you still have that ownership, even though millions of people are still looking at it? Do you still feel like you own comics? Own Who's first, comics. Jeff. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a, it, you know, comics is just, a, is a, as you pointed out, as a medium, but it's a storytelling medium. And right. so, you know, those stories are now just yeah. migrating to another medium. I mean, you could say the same thing about Lord of the Rings, right? right. Which was, right. You know, it's in a big, a bunch of big, thick books, and a lot of us read it as kids, and it, and it impacted us like comics, you know, impact you. Um, it's obviously not graphic, but it's, it's it, 
you know, has a similar kind of story type. And you know, mm -hmm. that's all on the big screen, and it's mm -hmm. somewhat different, and people didn't like it that certain parts of the book weren't put in the movie. And, okay. But you know, the storytelling has to sort of fit the medium, I think, a little okay. bit. Yeah. Definitely. Patrick? Uh, well, I, wa I wanted to go back to San Diego and how okay, like sure. now there's, uh, it's become really a pop culture con. It's not a true comic book con, and, and talking to a lot of my friends that own shops and uh, retailers uh, and guests and uh, artists, People go there for the celebrity, and, and it kind of pushes comics to the side a little bit, which mm -hmm. I, as a comic fan, it, it's, it's kind of hard. And I actually uh, went to the premiere for uh, Comic-Con, uh, the, the film with Chuck Rosansky, uh, the right, guy right, behind right. Uh, okay. uh, yeah. Eat, High Comics. Uh, right. Eat, Super Size Me was behind it, uh, met oh, him. Spurlock. 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 Yeah, right. great guy. Uh, and he did a great uh, documentary about San Diego and the different types of people that attend that show. So if you kind of want to get uh, a, a good uh, grasp of uh, the the different type of people that attend a show uh, such as Comic Con. I, I su strongly suggest that documentary. But um, to me, I got to go to a lot of conventions now. To me, the true comic book con now is Baltimore Comic Con. Yeah. I hate oh, to yeah. be, since I'm yeah. from this area and like really mm -hmm. promote that show. But Mark Nathan is a good friend of mine. But to me, a lot of the diehard real comic book legends go to that show. Oh, yeah. And there's not a lot of celebrity there, but you can really meet with these guys there and. Uh, see the people that are putting together the comic books that we love, and it, it, it's a great show. And so if you are in the D.C. area, strongly check, checking out the Baltimore Comic Con no, It is a great show. It may have, I mean, from a back-issue perspective, if people collect old comic books, it may have, it certainly has more back-issue comics than San Diego, by far. Yeah. Um, it's a true comic show to me. It, it, to yeah. it totally is. I mean, you know, it rivals, you know, uh, uh, Wizard was on a show in Chicago, which yeah. predates Wizard. Yes. That show has a lot of co old comic books, uh, but Mark is one or close to so it's a, he's really done a fantastic job to keep that thing going yes. without sort of giving into the the sort of more commercial side that of is true very much that so Billy and back to the San Diego you know the explosion of the San Diego con it really is a detriment though because mm. I went in 2010 and I was covering the event though I wasn't going as just a spectator but I found myself thinking that if I were there just to have fun and just to see as much as I could see you really have to prioritize because at any given time of the day there's right. like five different things you want to see there's very just true. so much stuff you know going on all the time and for instance I wanted to get into the small panel I wanted to cover the Smallville panel right. and could not get in it was such a mob scene mm -hmm. right. you know so that I guess is the downside yeah, of right. how popular yeah. these cons are yeah uh, yeah these bigger cons they seem to suffer from sort of like a, a ADD almost where I it's just like this relationship. just right. throw right. as much stuff as you exactly. can right. at exactly them. Yes. it's like it's like a magpie convention <laughs> well, <laughs> a convention for magpies well, at one point at San Diego in the last couple of years they had actually talked about taking all the old comic dealers and moving them onto the roof. I heard that. Really? Under a tarp, but it would be an open air, <laughs> open air environment. Uh, and so that didn't go over so well. So they didn't do that. But you know, they are, they are building an expansion to it. And I suspect that the comic dealers will get pushed back into the back mm -hmm. of the room. Right. OK, and on that note, uh, we just need to cut to a break. But first, we're going to have Billy right here. She's going to be at Free Comic Book Day at Comics and Collectibles and talking to Mark Nathan. We'll be right back. I'm Jason Aaron, and you're watching Fantastic Forum. It's Billy Ray Bates for Fantastic Forum on Free Comic Book Day at Cards and Comics in Reisterstown, Maryland, in the Baltimore area. We see a lot of people here, and we're about to talk to some of them. I'm here with Iron Man. This is quite an honor. Hi, Iron Man. How you doing? <laughs> you can call me Tony. Okay, so, but that's revealing your secret identity, or is it well, not so secret anymore? The cat's already out of the bag, so. Ah, okay. So this is a great costume. How long did it take you to put this together? Uh, probably about, like, just collecting things, three or four months, and then, as far as work, about uh, six, yeah, about 50 hours. It does look like you've been in a few, um, a little bit of combat. Yeah, you gotta give it a little battle damage, so. Great. So what's the craziest question that people come up and ask you at stuff like this? Um, what's your costume made out of? <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's not crazy. No, it's just normal. And who else would you see on Free Comic Book Day but Captain America? Are you excited to be here? Yeah, absolutely. It's fun. Where do you find a shield like this? 
make it. So uh, start as a block of aluminum, spun down to the right size, grooves, painted, and assembled. Wow, that's pretty good. Anything else you want to tell fans out there, Cap? Um, get out to the stores, help support your local comic stores, and uh, get some comics. The superheroes are like are Captain America, Hulk, Wolverine, um, Iron Man, Black Widow, I like Superman, I like all of them. I'm Steve Conley. I'm the writer and artist of Bloop, the story about a little space monkey. Uh, the, uh, it's currently an online comic strip. We have uh, eight pages online as of now. A new page goes up every Monday at 6 p.m. It's a story of a little space monkey who is searching for the perfect tree. He finds a perfect tree, and just as he finds it and builds his tree house, he, uh, he finds that the entire planet's uh, uh, got a big corporation who wants to build on the same spot. So it, it turns into a kind of uh, Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner story. What was your inspiration for this? Uh, this was actually a little side character I had in, a, in a, some self-published work I did previously. And uh, it just the character was so much fun. I've been working on this story, this story for about six or seven years. And um, it, it's, to me, it's just a really fun story. And uh, I, I keep having, I keep giggling as I'm drawing it and writing it. And so that tells me I'm in the right direction. At least I hope so. My name's John Gallagher, and I'm the creator, writer, and artist of Buzz Boy, about the world's coolest super sidekick. Instead of having a secret back cave, he's got his own diner he hangs out at because he loves milkshakes. And then I also co-creator of Roboy Red, which is about a runaway theme park robot. So uh, I've been doing comics for the last uh, 14 years, self-publishing, and have also done a lot of corporate comics for other companies as well. You've seen a lot of people here today. I have, yeah. There's been hundreds of people here. Uh, cards, comics, and collectibles in, in Reisterstown is always a great place for free comic book day. I'm here talking to Mark Nathan, now the owner of Cards and Comics in Reisterstown, Maryland, in the Baltimore area. I having a lot of fun today? Yeah, it's a great time. It's uh, only a little after 12, and we've had, I think, a few hundred people through. We've only been open since 11, and it's been lots of fun. Is that a better turnout than in years past? It seems to be a little larger. It does. We've had good years and okay years, but this one seems to be a really, really good year. Okay, and what do you find that people are looking for when they come here? Is there anything in particular besides no, I mean, the big movie that was released? People like free. I mean, people do like their free comics. But there's a lot of people shopping pretty good, too. Um, and, and the costumes, as you can see. There's just, I think it's just a, a, a kind of a holiday. It's a celebration. Can you talk a little bit about how important this day is? Um, the casual people are the ones that really explode on this day. And I think that, that, I don't know if that's national, but the people that I talk to, it, it seems to be the case. It's harder to get the regulars in on this day. But at least you're getting a feel that people are here who have never been here before. That's you have true. new... I do, I do see that. I do see people that I, I've never seen, or I see people that I, I see every now and then. I'm usually like when we have a sale or a signing or something, you know, an event, those people that we reach. But um, but for this, I guess um, there's there are some a big chunk of people that I've never seen before. Welcome back to Fantastic Forum. We've been talking about is this the greatest generation of ever and uh, I just wanted to like uh, ask you uh, with we, we I touched upon like uh, the Avengers and how it's not a big thing to see like a very human actor playing Thor fighting a CGI Hulk mm -hmm. now this is like the first generation where you have video games and you have all these other like you know distractions and all that uh, why do you think that like you know suddenly all of a sudden this hobby that, like I said before, that we used to kind of like was our lives, it's starting to go out into the world. You see kids in like Spider-Man t-shirts, you see kids in Batman t-shirts. It's not even a weird thing to, you know, see someone walking around with a t-shirt on that says Bazinga or something like that. <laughs> so why do you think that? Yeah. Great marketing. Great marketing. And the nerds right. are starting to rule the world. Um, <laughs> yeah. It ain't right. all about, yes. um, mm -hmm. you know, being a pro athlete. Um, you know, we have 
social, the Mark Zuckerberg is a hero. Bill Gates became big. You know, these guys that, you know, they, they're putting out products that we enjoy. And when we, we now have nerds that are out there mm. working in Hollywood that were fans of the comic books. So now they're out there producing those materials. And so uh, I, it's pulling out that inner geek. We're, we're wearing it as a badge of honor now instead of hiding it away. Exactly. And so uh, yeah. I, I think it's, and then and the fact that other people can connect with that in where we have so many differences, there's that comic book that we connect with. And so that's helping and it's marketing and marketing it to all of us and I'm enjoying it. And oh, yeah. I'm sure we all are enjoying it. It's a point you made about Bill Gates because I think that, you know, as we become a society that values technology more and more. Exactly. And people, who, there you go. people who produce technology, it becomes sort of a bra brainy thing. So, right. right, you know, because yes. the, the sort of brainy has always been associated with the nerdy. You exactly. know what I mean? Yeah, no, right. exactly. So that becomes a, v a valued trait. Yeah, I mean, like the, I mean, God, like the geek king, like Joss Whedon directs Avengers. And this is like a guy who can't keep a TV show on television. <laughs> but True. yet, he just goes out there and, you know, because he's like the best man for the job, goes and does this thing yep. that people are responding to. And I just find it absolutely incredible. you have any thoughts, Billy? I think the Facebook thing really is key because, mm -hmm. yeah, this geek took this idea and just made it this huge, huge, huge success. Mm -hmm. And I think also that Facebook has made um, us a little more geeky, too, just in our mm -hmm. behavior, aside from comic books or anything like that, mm -hmm. that it's made, um, it's, it's caused geeky behavior from people <laughs> who wouldn't normally be geeky, you know, digging into their Facebook and, and posting mm -hmm. and, and all of that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so going along with that, so uh, guys like J. Michael Straczynski, B Babylon 5, right. writing comic books now. Y you have that crossover of Hollywood now writing comic books, and so it's making it acceptable. It's pulling out that inner geek that we've used to hide, and so um, it, it's become making it acceptable. And so now that's, I, I think, uh, helping uh, get us all out there to like really show that geek badge of honor. Right. To, uh, yeah. So like, hey, you know, they dig it, we dig it, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Plus, I think a lot of the, the decision makers now are sort of of an age where they grew up with a lot of these stories. And so when someone says, hey, how about a movie about a guy who like shoots webs out of his hand and mm -hmm. climbs up a wall, they think, oh, that's great. We like, right. you know, I mean, they're familiar with the story. It's not alien to them like yes. it was right. uh, maybe to earlier generations. Yeah, comic book wise, movie wise, what, what is keeping you excited about this big, massive hobby that we have? I think it's just all the, the, the sort of new energy in the in, in the hobby. You know, I, mm -hmm. this, this hobby has sort of had ups and downs. I mean, even from its, you know, in the 50s, it almost died. Mm -hmm. There almost was no, in the 70s, that before the direct market in stores came out, it almost died again. So this thing always sort of almost dies. And then, you know, in the 90s, we had, there was a big implosion in the comic uh, book industry. And now it's coming back again. So it, it's almost like, it's like Dracula, right? You can't, you, <laughs> you just can't <laughs> kill it. Every time you kill it, it right. rises again. Right. Yes. And, and each time it rises, it's, it's better than it was. You know, it was great in the 40s. Almost died in the 50s and in the 60s. You had like the the Marvel, you know, the, all the new sort of new kind of characters who were more sort of human based, you know, like Spider Man and, and these yeah. people, real people. Mm -hmm. And almost dies again. Then you had the you know the 90s it exploded uh, with a lot of creator owned properties. Almost died again. And that, you know now you've got this sort of cross medium sort of uh, explosion of comics and comic properties. Very I mean, it's, I I just think that they're so resilient. It's incredible. You know, it really is a sort of an American pop art form. It just it's it's so ingrained in America, it's, it's hard to kill it. Yeah, I, I love the fact that like we're, we're also taking ownership of it because while we do have the DCs, we have the Marvels, we have the Image, we also have Kickstarter now, where somebody actually has an there idea yeah. and they yeah. go, if you believe in this idea, will you help me fund it? And I just find that like really, truly incredible. One of the things, I was trying to think what I'm excited about right now going on in comics, um, the new DC 52. A lot, it, mm. lot, there's a, some mixed feelings out there mm -hmm. that DC relaunched their entire line, but I'm loving it. I have to say, um, I wouldn't have never thought that I would have loved Aquaman so much <laughs> with this new Aquaman title uh, with Jeff Johns, Ivan Rice um, doing it. It's it's an amazing title. I'm loving the story, loving the art. Ivan Rice is an amazing, yeah. great Brazilian artist. I love The Big Bang Theory, mm -hmm. the TV show. You know, I enjoy it because um, it shows not just geeks, a set of geeks, but I think what really they clearly define is four different varieties of geeks. Mm. They've Very actually true. made, you know, they don't just call them all geeks. They <laughs> mm -hmm. make them different. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Sheldon, he's so Spock-like. And I love <laughs> yes. the Spockiness of him. Um, you know, I think that that's, 
it's great to watch something like that and, and I almost feel like okay with this explosion of geekdom it's like you know we're all standing back saying okay welcome to the party we've been here a while right, but exactly. it still is wonderful to see other people laughing and, and liking stuff like that. Yeah I mean people just seem to really be getting it right now. It yeah. Like I don't feel like it, this is probably going to sound like all metaphysical, but I don't feel <laughs> as alone anymore. <laughs> you know, it's like people are responding, people are seeing this thing that we've always seen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I appreciate the fact that they've been doing that. I really, oh, yeah. truly do. So, yeah, if, any more thoughts? Um, big fan of The Walking Dead. I want to put a promo Walking on Dead. Walking yeah. Dead. That, <laughs> and actually, because of the success of The Walking Dead, people found out that it was a comic book. Um, I know. Plenty of comic book store friends selling out of The Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's doing very well. And, uh, There's a huge I, event coming up, Walking and, Dead uh, 100. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and it's crossing over into the horror market because yeah. it's a, a horror genre type of a piece. It, it's crossing over into the horror conventions, and those stars are starting to get big. And yeah. uh, so it's just amazing what it's doing. And it's b being, doing great for Robert Kirkman because oh, yeah, now all yeah, of his yeah. books all are his starting stuff, to right. get. Yeah. Uh, looked at by Hollywood, Thief of Thieves, I think, is one of his other titles that that's being looked at by Hollywood. It's right. it's great. Right. Um, I'm enjoying it. So promos on all of that. Walking Dead, <laughs> and right. I want free issues from all you companies for putting your names. <laughs> <out there. laughs> yeah, out of all this, the one casualty I, that really, really, truly hurts me, and you'll, you'll, I don't know if you'll disagree or, or agree. I miss Oracle. Oracle is such oh. a great character. I agree oh. with that. Just I'm such a great character. I do love character. Batgirl. Yeah. That You're girl is right? awesome in the new I am movie. torn yeah. yes. because, you know, I boycotted Oracle for <laughs> years and years, but then I sat down and read a couple issues, and I thought, gosh, this is really well written. Right. You know, they've really developed this character, and she stands for something. Yes. So, you know. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, I'm glad Batgirl's back. I'll be, well, on the, I'll be on the I'm glad Batgirl's back. Well, back. once again, and I'll, I'll say this once again, when you really get down to it, what really matters to me most is that we still have these characters out there. We still have these things that we love as kids, and they're still very much alive and still very much kicking. And they'll be here long after we're done. I absolutely yeah. love that. I absolutely love that. So, yeah, that's another episode of Fantastic Form. You all take care. Join the Fantastic Forum fan community on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for all the latest news and updates.